Our next speaker is a postdoc researcher in atmospheric chemistry and a recently arrived Brit. Please give a warm North American welcome to Christy Ashworth. It's a dark autumnal night in the not too distant future in a place not so far, far away. Suddenly, ah, where's my pumpkin? Imagine, no Halloween jack-o'-lantern, no Thanksgiving pie. His screams interrupt his sister's daydreams of a white Christmas. Well, her presents piled up underneath the Michigan-grown Christmas tree and dad's positively drooling at the thought of his craft beer lovingly brewed from the finest Michigan cactus juice. And mum, she's remembering the good old days of her childhood. My, how times have changed. No more Michigan cherry pies. No more Michigan sweet corn grills. In fact, no more Michigan harvest. But it could have been worse. What if the earth had never been vegetated? No burnt fingers for Captain Cavey here. No building materials for his starter home. No fig leaves. He'd have been helpless as a naked mole rat. But it didn't happen like that, and we've made it this far with vegetation. But what now? What does the future hold for Earth's plants? Is it Armageddon? Or will they rise up, triffid-like, and reclaim the world? (laughs) Well, I'm sure you think I'm exaggerating. Plants adapt, right? But the changes that are happening now are happening too fast for them to evolve new coping mechanisms. Changes brought about by the evil triad of climate change, predation, and other pressures. So the climate's changing, and that's changing the circulation of the oceans and the atmosphere. And scientists believe that's why we're experiencing more extreme weather events. Floods, droughts, storms, all uprooting and tearing down our plants. And as the world warms, vegetation climate zones, those colored bands you can see on the map behind me, they're shifting. They're shifting polewards, and they're shifting upwards in altitude. And trees just don't shift that fast. And the seasons, they're changing. Spring blooms starting earlier and earlier, and plants are beginning to miss time. Uh, And so when they send out their uh, come-hither perfumes, their pollinators just aren't there to respond to them. And it's not just climate that's changing. Environmental pollution's taking its toll on our vegetation as well. In some places, The air, the water, the soil, they're all too toxic or too degraded for our plants to survive. And here's a map of the world's population. As it increases and people continue to migrate into cities, vegetation is losing out in the grab for land, and that's squeezing them further out of their comfortable climate zones. And how about fire? As global temperatures soar, wildfires become more frequent, more extensive, and more destructive. I mean, wildfires in wet old Washington state. And predation. Herbivores are thriving, and they're attacking plants in um, greater numbers and more frequently than in the past. That's the Colorado pine beetle hard at work and the devastation that it's caused in the Rockies. But all around the world, there are signs that plants are ready, willing, and able to strike back. Many non-native species prove to be highly invasive when they're introduced to a new home. I'm sure you're familiar with the kudzu vine and the havoc it's wrought in the south. But did you know that in Australia, plants are poisoning the land? So in arid regions, the roots of agricultural crops have drawn up so much groundwater, they've reached the saltwater layer below, and the soil's now too salty to be usable. And those perfumes that plants release, well, in the right place at the right time, that can whip up a really potent mix of ozone and particulate matter, poisoning the very air that we breathe. So, is this the future? Another scramble for mutually assured destruction? Or can we halt the slide? Can we face down the evil triad? Can we save our plants and thereby save ourselves uh, from the grim future I've been painting? Well, we can, if we all act now. What action can we take? 
Well, some enterprising people have taken to lashing down their young trees to stop them migrating northwards. <laughs> Others have suggested putting the predators on the plate. Could zoo vine and pine beetle salad, anyone? I'd love to offer you a bread roll to go with it, but wheat and other cereal crops are going to be amongst the first casualties. Now, seriously, insect nutrition bars are already on the market. Um, if you'd like some rather more sensible suggestions of what action you can take, or would just like to know a little bit more about anything I've talked about, why not Google some of these terms? Uh, I've been Kirsty Ashworth, and it's been a pleasure. Thank you. <laughs>